Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. According to the BBC, the no votes have a couple percent lead in the upcoming referendum vote for Scottish independence from the UK. Now joining us from Sheffield, England, to discuss the question of Scottish independence, as well as the historical roots of the issue, is Peter Watt. He's a lecturer at the University of Sheffield in the UK. He's currently working on a book about the political culture of Britain with co-author Jason Freeman. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter. So Peter, um, for our viewers that might not be familiar with it, um, give us like a brief um, historical background of why this vote's happening now. Um, you know, Scotland's only been part of the UK for about 300 years, so it was independent before that. Yeah, well, it's been part of the UK for 300 years, uh, but now the idea, I think, of the, the UK United Kingdom is largely bankrupt. The after the two countries joined in union, which wasn't necessarily a, a, a very popular uh, thing at the time. It was an agreement between uh, the crowns of the two countries, uh, but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily backed by uh, popular will. Uh, but of course, in that period between then and now, you had um, the rise of the slave trade, for example, and Britain uh, expanding its empire uh, throughout the globe. Uh, and that uh, was, Scotland was as much a part of that as, uh, as England was. There was a lot, there's a lot of people in Scotland who don't uh, like to uh, remember that. Uh, and it was also um, part of the Industrial Revolution, um, which uh, allowed for uh, the United Kingdom to become a major world power. Uh, and then more recently, uh, uh, Scotland and England and the United Kingdom uh, fought two major wars, but that was some time ago now. And uh, this union, uh, the currency of this union has, has kind of begun to decline. Uh, and it's, that's happened uh, in a, a very marked way uh, in the last uh, two or three decades. And my sense is that the major reason for this is that the uh, political parties the Conservative Party, the Tories, uh, the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats have uh, all inflicted policies on Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland, which have uh, really been to the detriment of the majority of the population. They've been policies as elsewhere, as very similar to what's happened in the United States, that benefit the rich, um, create uh, higher levels of unemployment. Um, we see the rise of the corporate sector as, as kind of taking over the state. And, and uh, Peter, and Peter, so, you know, you support the independence vote. Um, thanks to two um, gracious volunteers for The Real News, um, Alan Knight and Tim Mitchell, we're able to speak directly to some voters in Scotland. Um, this is voter Sue Brogan about why she's voting no. As a Labour supporter, I believe in solidarity and community and everybody working together. And we work together to build National Health Service, Welfare State, BBC, Open University, mm -hmm. e Equal right. Pay. Um, I came in, born on, in the welfare, through the NHS, yeah. passed the 11 plus, got free education, free university education. Yeah. The economic case has not been made. Mm -hmm. Long term, very long term, Scotland's got a lot of resources and it might be fine. But in the medium term, short and medium term, I think it's going to be very, very difficult. So, Peter, that was a voter who was, you know, agreeing with the idea that Scotland is more left of the rest of the UK. But she's saying because of that, Scotland needs to be needs to stay with the UK or the UK, as we've already seen in the recent election, it's moving to the right. And by losing this 8 percent of the vote of the population, the rest of the UK will move even farther to the right. How would you respond to arguments like that? This is going to make the working class people of the United Kingdom and maybe even Scotland more vulnerable if Scotland becomes independent. Well, the Labour Party that she's referring to no longer exists. Uh, there's a reason why many people in Scotland call the Labour Party of today the Red Tories, because essentially the three parties, uh, aside from the SNP, but the three parties you have in England, the Liberal Democrats, the Conservatives, um, and the Labour Party essentially all agree on the main issues. 
so she referred to free education. What was the, which party was it, remind me, which brought in the tuition fees? It was under Tony Blair, it was the Labour Party. You used to be able to get a free education in England. Okay, you can't anymore. And in fact, now you have to pay £9,000 a year, at least for one year of university education. In Scotland, however, uh, they couldn't pass that through because Scotland had, uh, by the time Mr. Blair started introducing these things, it was so unpopular in Scotland that they couldn't pass it. But it was the Labour Party who sold out on education. It was the Labour Party responsible for uh, the uh, deepening of uh, neoliberal policies. They, Mr. Blair continued, and Mr. Brown continued the Tory agenda. There's very little difference between those two parties. Uh, it was Mr. Blair, Blair uh, the Labour government uh, invaded Iraq, uh, the military operations in Afghanistan. Mr. Tony Blair started five wars, military invasions. Um, it's Tony Blair, the Labour Party, who supported uh, the uh, increasing uh, expansion into the West Bank, uh, who supported the sale of armaments to Saudi Arabia and to Israel. This was all done under the Labour Party. So what I would say to uh, the person uh, you just had on is that she's talking about a Labour Party which no longer exists. The three parties uh, which we have, which govern Westminster, uh, are completely out of touch with popular interests. And, and, and so, Peter, and so what about the argument that that if Scotland is, leaves the UK, that the rest of the UK will become, will become more to the right? Uh, the argument that uh, uh, Scot Scotland should remain in the United Kingdom to kind of save England from itself, I think, is actually a terrible argument. Why should uh, the people in Scotland, the voters in Scotland, uh, why are they responsible for the Tory government? Surely it's the... Uh, I mean, in Scotland, there are more panda bears than there are Tory members of Parliament. It's ridiculous. Uh, we have There's one MP in Scotland for the Tory party, uh, and yet Scotland is expected to uh, suffer under a Tory government for decades um, just to save England from from uh, having, that, having that fate. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, the, uh, there's never been a Tory majority in Scotland since 1951. Uh, Scotland doesn't vote Tory and yet always gets a Tory government. And then the issue of Labour, well, yes, uh, the Labour Party will lose 41 MPs. But if England wants to vote Labour, then it should do so. But they should focus, uh, the focus should be on English people voting Tory. Uh, if Scotland goes independent. That's the problem. It's not that uh, Scotland wants to go independent. Uh, for me, this is a, a question of democracy. The, the people in Scotland should get the government that they vote for. Now, that's not the view that uh, is being um, peddled by the No campaign, and it's certainly not being peddled by the BBC or the media establishment who are firmly against uh, this kind of democratic opening that's uh, taking place before our eyes in Scotland. It really is quite uh, astonishing the kind of levels of participation, popular participation, uh, which has really taken the Westminster elites by surprise. So 97% of eligible voters are now registered to vote. Uh, the the uh, turnout in this referendum could be 87, 88 percent. That's much higher than uh, what happens in UK general elections. And so, um, you know, I don't think people in Scotland are worried about their long term economic outcomes because it's sitting on huge oil reserves. The per capita wealth of the average Scottish person is much is significantly higher than that of England. Um, but banks are threatening to pull out. So I think a lot of people that are opposed to independence are worried about, like as Sue, as this woman Sue said, they're worried about the short-term economic impact that, that, could, um, that could happen in Scotland. How would you respond to those concerns? Well, actually the boss of the royal, I mean, that was, that, that's, see, that's one of the myths that's kind of been, uh, again, peddled by the BBC, that suddenly the Royal Bank of Scotland is going to pack its bags 
and leave uh, for the city of London. Uh, it's simply untrue, but it's, it was reported by the BBC and it was, a, it was uh, leaked, apparently leaked, uh, by the Treasury in London. But of course, the following day, the boss of the Royal Bank of Scotland issued a letter to all its employees saying there was no question that uh, they were going to pack up and leave. They may uh, relocate their central office to London, but there was no, uh, no issue of uh, jobs suddenly leaving. And I think the reason for that is quite simple. Why would the Royal Bank of Scotland, in fact, or any other bank suddenly leave because they're independent? Uh, the banks are doing very well, and I imagine they'll continue to do so very well. Remember that in the midst of an economic recession, it's the banks, the global banks like the Royal Bank of Scotland, who saw their profits rise by about 15%, while in your country, in the United States, uh, mortgages were... Uh, homes were being foreclosed and uh, there was a serious economic downturn. The uh, banks, in fact, are largely responsible for the economic recession. It's not because people are going to vote for, uh, in, for democracy and for greater political participation that's going to cause an economic recession. I think this is just really part of the uh, scare campaign, um, which kind of makes sense because... Um, the governing elites uh, of the Lib Dems, the Conservatives and the Labour Party, uh, they treated uh, the Scottish referendum campaign uh, with a great deal of condescension. Uh, you know, here's the Scots again, uh, ungrateful, uh, pushing for these things. They could, there's no way they could ever make it on their own. Uh, and so they dismissed it. Uh, and now... Uh, the polls are showing that it's going to be very close. Uh, so they, they, they were very complacent. And then the three leaders of the main parties, Tweedle D, Tweedle Dom and Tweedle Dummer, that's Cameron, Miliband and Clegg, all rushed to Scotland uh, to say, uh, we, we don't want you to leave. You can have devolution. You can have an improved version of devolution. And of course, it was kind of ironic because uh, prior to the referendum, uh, the idea of devolution, what they call dev devil max, uh, maximum devolution, was very popular. In fact, the, the idea was to put that option on the ballot paper so that the, you would have either de devil max or uh, complete independence. And the Westminster government said that's out of the question. It's independence or nothing because they never expected uh, this groundswell of uh, uh, ordinary people, working class people. Uh, uh, the, the, this grassroots campaign suddenly becoming politicized. And what you're seeing is really a kind of uh, uh, massive uh, uh, support for the Yes campaign, which has just grown and grown in the last uh, in the last few weeks. And so, Peter, even if the vote goes to the no side, as which, you know, polls indicate that it may, mm. what is this groundswell of activism, this uh, engagement by the, the masses what could that mean for Scotland's politics and, and the UK's future? I think even if there's a no vote, um, uh, a no vote is, I think, kind of um, a vote for the status quo. But I don't think that, that things can stay the same after this. Uh, that, you know, since all I can remember growing up in Scotland was this sense of uh, disempowerment, uh, there's nothing you can do to change it. This was the years of Margaret Thatcher. Uh, there is no alternative, she said. There is no such thing as society. So you had drummed into you from a very early age. There was nothing you could do to change things. And, of course, that continued. So the young people in Scotland today who, who they, they've known nothing else, they can't remember anything else, suddenly they have a stake in Scotland's future. They feel like their voice is going to be heard. It's going to be counted. And I'm not saying that uh, everything will end uh, with independence because it can answer all the questions nor solve all the problems. Uh, but I certainly think it's a step in the right direction uh, because the uh, present uh, setup that is so corrupt, I mean, the British state, the British government is massively corrupt and massively undemocratic. And... Uh, I think any attempt 
to uh, redress that imbalance is a positive thing. Um, the no campaign uh, keep referring to this kind of narrow nationalism of the of the yes of the yes camp. Uh, actually, I don't think it's about nationalism. This is these these are questions of class. It's about social justice. It's about getting nuclear arms out of Scotland, weapons of mass destruction. It's about pre protecting the National Health Service. And the person you spoke to talked about the National Health Service. Well, it's the Labour Party, which uh, are, have pledged to continue with the austerity cuts that have been imposed by this present government. Uh, so unfortunately, the Labour Party are not an alternative anymore. Um, and that's why I think so many Labour Party voters have uh, moved towards the idea of independence because uh, the Scottish National Party, uh, certainly not a perfect party and probably not the party I would want to see in power, uh, but then I don't want to see uh, any of the others or any of the other mainstream parties in power uh, following independence if, if it happens. Uh, but it's the SNP which are filling the boots of Labour because Labour has completely and utterly abandoned its uh, project. Peter Watt, thank you so much for joining us. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at the Real News Network.